Hello everyone, how are you doing? Kasim here. Welcome, welcome. I hope you've been enjoying all the videos that I've been um, releasing so far. I'm really, um, I'm really happy about all the positive numbers that I'm getting in the back office of the video on, of my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for supporting. Um, we've made a lot of, um, a lot of update to the to the portfolio. So in today's video, we are going to just you know look over the same basic things the week view and the month view I have I, as you can see right here my account is currently on pause and uh, I'm gonna explain the reason why I moved some stocks from my old broker which was stash invest move everything over to m1 so I'm gonna be t uh, talking about all this portfolio in, in, a, in more details in a bit we also have here the unemployment in, uh, statistics from the um, from the government we've gone up we've gone up to about 14 percent 14 percent of the US population now are basically jobless and about 18 million I mean 20 20 million people apply for um, were unemployed apply for unemployment so we're gonna get into that in more detail we're also going to touch on on the S&P 500 this was pre 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 corona pre-rona and we see the market went down pretty hard we've had about half of the recovery uh, the market recovered it looks like it's gonna trend back down I'm gonna touch on that as well but before we get into all that I, I do have a lot to touch on today so let's get into it so what I did was I decided to move all my all my stuff well all my stocks into m1 all my holding into m1 so it's just easy for me to manage from one place and i like the setup with m1 um, they don't do drips uh, m1 m1 just reinvest based on weights of they invest based on weighted average so let's say you have an, a stock that you set a target target of the stock i only want 500 in here um, instead of getting dividend and it, it keeps being reinvested keep being reinvested into the same one that you already hit your limit that you want to have in there M1 will take that investment and put it into other places that might need it the most so I really like their, their platform I like how they have everything set up so I decided to move everything over as you can see the numbers has changed a little bit from la from last week that's because most of my investments in stash I, most of my investment in stash they they they've, they've been up pretty much because I've I've had stash for I think a year and a half or two so they've been up pretty much so mo moving everything over has basically increased my uh, my my holding in here so it's, in total the account is up for this week um up for the year. Well, you know, I really don't like, don't really look at these numbers, no matter if it's positive or negative. Like I said, I, I, I try to focus on cash flow. This is what I, I can directly control. Cash flow that goes into the account and earnings that I'm earning from the account. So if you look at the month view here, the month view, so far this month, we've had um, 385 go into the account. As you can see, cash is still waiting here to be reinvested invest, as well. And so far this month, so well, the, within the past 30 days of me posting this video, I, the account has earned almost two bucks. So I'm gonna be sharing this with you every single week. So stick around, you see you see my progress. Please subscribe, share share my videos with other people as well that you, that you think might you know be interested in this kind of kind of information share the share the share with them so the process that i went through was i had to email m1 uh email the customer service and tell them hey i want to move the uh my account over from one broker to another then what they told me was okay once we get all the process started send up send us all your information your account statement and everything so i send everything to them they said when they get the process started, they're gonna put my account on pause. So when they move everything over and I have to go into M1, right? I have to go into M1 and do stuff. Um, so what I had to do was I had to cre create a different pie. So I created a pie for Stash and I uploaded all the companies that I, that I had in Stash. 
I uploaded them in here now then you have to put the allocation allocation of um, uh, the asset allocation that you want so in any new money that will come into this part of the portfolio 2% uh, will go here 2% will go here 2% will go here and you know the list goes down from there like I said the way that I like to look at the market is I like to have a piece of everything I like to have a piece of the whole market I like ETFs and I also like uh, individual stocks because my philosophy my philosophy with investing is it would take five to ten years to actually accumulate right accumulate um, um, you know in investment so that means putting putting money in for five ten years and then after that if you if you're making enough money from dividend then you now let that, that money be obviously if you have more money to put into the market at that time you keep on putting money into the market at that time but the whole point of this portfolio is for me to kind of like like treat it like a baby kind of thing look after it put money in nurture it and uh, over time once it has grown i'll just kind of let it do its thing and go to college and that's basically how i'm just looking at this portfolio but yeah like i had to create the pie and put all the different companies in it took like four four hours of on working on this so it's been um it was it was really long but i, I got everything done then once you get all this stuff set up then you have to email you have to email them and tell them hey i got all that stuff done then then what they will do is they will now release all the stock back in here i will do an update on this next week so you see what i'm saying let me not make this too long going into the trans uh activity tab here i filtered everything by dividend so you know so so you, so you know i filtered it by dividend and i also filtered it by the current week the whole week that we're in that we're in that we're in so i got dividend from all these different companies apple paid dividend but um Bank of America Mellon, uh, Avis, Costco, Main Street, Capital. This is a bank as well. This is a uh, property, um, property company. So all this company paid all this dividend, and as you can imagine, it's just it's not much. Yes, it's not much, but I am looking forward to days that I'll be earning a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars from each of these companies. So. I'm just showing you guys this portfolio to, to I'm showing you this portfolio to, to see to show you what's possible okay that's why I'm doing this so just to share with everybody to show everybody what's possible and what can be accomplished in the markets right in terms of trading no trading really happened this week um, because of all the all the movement that um, that I was doing so no trading really happened and uh, this were all the positions some of the position that we're moving from stash, moving them into M1. So, so that's that. Let's look at funding history. This is the thing that I'm excited about because it's stuff that I can control, right? This, my goal is to make this go up every single week. I think I bump bump up my contribution to about 500 a week now. So hopefully, I can be bringing that up, 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 up to a point that I'll get to where I need to be. But so far, this is what I've contributed in uh, 2020. So uh, to wrap up the portfolio, we look at the month view here. Look at the month view. The uh, portfolio is doing really well. I've earned almost two bucks. So far, we have um, almost $400 in there. And we still have some cash waiting to be invested once everything resumes and gets back to normal in the portfolio. And we have, let's look at the week view. So the week view, we earned a total of $0.39 cents and no cash went in. Again, it's all because of this uh situation right here when it, where i'm moving all those stocks in from a different company i'm moving it into the into a different bro a different broker i'm moving them everything into m1 so hopefully i'm excited for next week so i can kind of show you a full updated uh, video of how the portfolio is doing but so far everything everything is looking great we're looking healthy out here in this portfolio up 21 percent let's go and look at the s p 500 so this is a month. This is a, a month view. Like this is three months view of the S and P 500. As you can see, in the past three months, we are basically we've gone down a lot. We've gone down a lot in the market, and we've also recovered about half of it. 
now the situation with the market right now everything is just kind of like in a stagnant position right now because in the past weeks we haven't really moved much we haven't really gone up we haven't gone down so everything has kind of like been in a range so I'm keeping a close eye on this situation because if we have a situation whereby it dropped down some more I'll definitely be accumulating some more shares um, of stocks but if it start going back up I will just keep on putting my normal amount that I want to be putting in every week right so this is this this is a, this is a key uh, situation to be looking at right here because we could be making a um, big move up or big move down right so I I personally was accumulating some shares as it was going down in the portfolio I was buying as, as the market is going down I'm a long-term investor when it comes to investing in dividend and at the same time I also believe in trading all right this channel is about both it's about day trading and investing for the long term because I believe both of them can work hand in hand actually mastering both of them can actually be great for 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 you you can be great for all of us if you can just master both of them so that's what I'm trying to do with this channel bringing you day trading content bringing you uh, dividend content and also uh, financial literacy uh, content but yeah so if the market goes keep on going down I'm definitely gonna be accumulating some more shares I'll increase my my uh, weekly contribution to my portfolio and if it's going up I'll keep everything just as is right now and uh, yeah we see the market gone down pretty much a lot and um, I'm gonna be taking advantage of this one way or the other so in an economic downturn like this something that is unprecedented something that we've never experienced before um, what I like to do is I like to look at the actual numbers right I don't like to look look at the news too much um, because you don't you don't get anything from that I like to look at the actual numbers and hear the people that are actually in control of the economy what are they saying so those are the, those are the points that I'm trying to bring to you the, uh, the unemployment rate in the US right now is 14.7 percent pretty high as compared to what we used to have before that's pretty that's pretty high compared to what we had before and we have over 20 uh 20 million million people in april alone in april alone you know file for unemployment so a lot of people are hurting out there but thank god for all the support that we that is coming in from the government in uh, unemployment check for people stimulus check for people so i think that's that's going to help out but the government needs to do a lot more they need to do a lot more to help people out but yeah this is this is the numbers that we're looking at right now and uh it's not looking pretty well but we'll keep pushing i'll give you my opinion on this and how i'm looking at this in terms of my investment to be honest for me um i still nothing has really changed I, i'm just sticking with my plan no matter what happened in the market i'm still putting an x amount of money into my account which is like roughly 500 a week putting it into my portfolio every single week and just dollar cost averaging because I know over the long term, over 10 years, 20 years, we're going to look at this and just be like, oh, that was a blip. That was a good buying opportunity. Because I remember the same thing happened in 2008, 2009. You know, st stocks were so cheap back then. Very, very cheap. And now, 11 years later, we're kind of like experiencing the same thing. So I'm going to be using this uh, situation right here to be accumulating more shares of companies that good companies are paying that are paying dividend i'm going to be buying more of their shares so um on wall street they've been talking about all these different uh types i don't know if you've if you've, if you've come across it they've been talking about all these different type of economic reco recovery shapes and as you can see on the s p 500 here on the s p 500 we not seeing a v shape right here right because the first one is supposed to be a V shape right here. So the economy, every, uh, everything, the market falls and went straight up. We are definitely not seeing a U. We are not seeing a W. So we're, we're looking more like an L or a swish, like a Nike swish, right? V shape. So this is what we're, we're kind of like looking at. It's more like this, 
switch that we're looking like right now because if we zoom out of this if we zoom out of this we can see that it's more of a, a swish but like I said earlier on here is would be a very very ins insightful place to watch these levels right here if you see the um, uh, resistant right up there resistant right up there support right up right down here so if it breaks down support it means most likely it's going to keep on going down so i'll be accumulating more shares is what i'm saying let me just draw this support and resistant here really quickly so yeah um so this is what i'm talking about this is the so um support and resistant this is the floor and this is the ceiling usually if price will break the ceiling and goes goes higher most likely it's going to keep on going up right and if the price will break the floor and keep on going down most likely it's going to keep on going down stocks they do the same thing all the time all the time so in this situation i'll just keep an eye and see what the market is doing if it keeps on if stocks keep on going down then i'm going to be increasing my contribution and keep buying some more on the way down because here was great opportunity to have accumulated a lot more shares than I, than I did but I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this and we'll be going on from there but so far so far we're looking at uh, a swish shape recovery or an L shape recovery it's looking more like between these two but we'll see we'll see what the market does and I'll keep on updating you on that so it's like, like I always say I follow the, the who is who in the economy I don't really follow the news media or anything like that I just like to look at who the people that are in control what are they saying what are they doing like this is the Fed chair the Federal Reserve he's the governor he's the one that prints the US dollar he's the one that deals with monetary policy of the economy right there's different type of policies and different type of uh, the different branches of government that that handle different things fiscal policy that means Money that is being spent on the economy, roads, bridges, stimulus check, uh, unemployment, that comes from the fiscal side, which is the the Congress, the President, the Senate. It comes from them, and then you have the other side, which is the monetary policy. Uh, monetary policy is just the interest. Who decides the interest rate? Uh, what actually goes on with monetary policy in the in the in the U.S. And this is the guy that is in charge. So I like to just listen to what he's saying and mo uh, and most 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 times, right? So he came out this week and uh, he updated us on what's going on with the economy. Slow the spread of the virus. Slow the spread of the virus. Some sectors of the economy. Some sectors of the economy have been effectively closed since mid March. Since mid -March. People have put their lives. People have and put their lives and livelihoods on hold. Making enormous sacrifices. Making enormous to protect, sacrifices. Not just their protect, own health. Not just their own health. And that of their loved but also ones, their neighbors, but also the their neighbors community. and the broader community. While we're all affected, while we're all affected, the burden affected, has fallen most heavily, fallen most heavily least on those bear. least able to bear. The scope and speed of this, the scope downturn, and speed are of this downturn are present. without modern significantly worse than significantly any recession, than any recession since, World since World War II. We are seeing a severe decline, we are seeing a severe in, economic decline in economic activity and employment. And, and, employment. and already the job gains and already of the, the job gains of the last erased. decade have been erased. Since the pandemic arrived, since the pandemic arrived just, two months, ago, just, just two months ago, more than 20 million people, million people have lost their job. A Fed survey being a released, survey tomorrow, being released reflects tomorrow findings reflects similar to many others. Similar to many Among others. Among people who were working Among in February, who were working almost, in February 40 almost 40 percent of those in households making less than forty thousand had lost a job. Had lost a job. In March, this reversal of economic, this reversal fortune, has of economic fortune has caused a level of pain that is hard to capture in words. As lives are offended, as lives are offended and make great uncertainty about the future. This downturn is different. This downturn is different from those that came before. Earlier in the post <coughs> World War II period, post -World War II period recessions were sometimes recessions were sometimes a cycle of high inflation, of high inflation followed, by followed by Fed tightening. The lower in so he goes on for the next half an hour and just talks about. Uh, the the economy is not in good situation in, in good position right now we so many people have lost their jobs so many people have lost their jobs and basically he he goes on and just talks for like another half an hour and say that the the the, the him he has a power to lend money he has a power to buy us treasury he has a power to buy certain things and do certain things in the in the economy but he don't have the power to spend 
he don't have the power to send you a check. If he had the power to send checks, it would have been great because I'm sure we all will all be getting two thousand dollars <laughs> per month right now. But he don't have the power to send checks, and he er is telling Congress that hey, look, listen, you guys need to send people money. You need to to make sure people have money in their pockets because they've all they've lost their jobs. Uh, small businesses might find it hard to come back into the work for workforce. So you guys need to do what you guys need to do and not worry about the debt. Don't worry about the U.S. debt. Don't worry about it. We're gonna figure figure that out later. But for now, you guys or you guys just have to make sure Americans have money in their pocket. Make sure they have money in their pocket. That's basically what he went on and talked for talked for like half an hour. We have my my favorite investor here, Warren Buffett. He's talking about what people should be doing with their investment, what investments are, how you should look at your investments. That you shouldn't look at it as pieces of paper. You know, these are pieces of company that you own, and the market is great. Let me just play the video so you can get what he's talking about. People bring the attitude to them too often that because they are liquid and quoted minute by minute, that it's an important that you develop an opinion on them minute by minute. Now, that's really foolish when you think about it. And that's something very important to me in 1949. I mean, that single thought stocks were parts of businesses and not just little things that moved around. Uh, charts are, charts were very popular in those days, and whatever it may be. Imagine for a moment that you decided to invest money now, and you bought a farm, and the farm land around here, let's say you bought 160 acres, and you bought it at X per share per acre, and the farmer next to you had 160 identical acres, same contour, same quality, soil quality, so it was, it was identical. And that farmer next door to you was a very peculiar character because every day that farmer with the identical farm said, I'll sell you my farm or I'll buy your farm at a certain price which he would name. Now, that's a very obliging neighbor. I mean, that's got to be a plus to have a fellow like that with the next farm. You don't get that with farms. You get it with stocks. If you want 100 shares of General Motors, you know, on a Monday morning, somebody will buy your 100 shares or sell you another 100 shares at exactly the same price, and that goes on five days a week. But just imagine if you had a farmer doing that. When you bought the farm, you looked at what the farm would produce. That was what went through your mind. You were saying to yourself, I'm paying X dollars per acre. I think I've got so many bushels of corn or so against on average, some years good, some years bad, some years the price will be good, some years the price will be bad, etc. But you think about the potential of the farm, and now you get this idiot that uh, buys a farm next to you, and on top of that, he's sort of a manic depressive and drinks, maybe smokes a little pot. So his numbers just go all over the place. The only thing you have to do is to remember that this guy next door is there to serve you and not to instruct you. You bought the farm because you thought the farm was, uh, had the potential. You don't really need So why do I keep an eye on what, what Warren Buffett says? This is basically why. <laughs> one share of his company, one, is worth this much, right? A lot of money. That's probably someone's mortgage, right, for one share. So if you go here, we look at history, his performance in the past... Uh, since he started the company, look at it. Look at the history of the company. I mean, if you started investing in in buying just this company, buying this company in 1994, and look at this situation right now, you your account up would have grown over 1,000 percent, right? 1,300 percent for 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 that matter. Here they went down a bit here, right? It went down a bit but bounced right back and then right here too is is gone down a bit i'm at the moment i keep um, buying shares right now as this this is going down i'm buying more shares and more shares and more shares because over time this would definitely go up this is all just the virus that's causing all this stuff for the stock but warren buffett he knows what he's talking about what he basically touched on in that in that video was saying that you don't have to sell your stocks you have the opportunity that, that you have the stock market that you can sell it if you need to 
but you don't have to sell your stock just look at your stocks as uh, a, a, a farm a property that's producing something and that's why I'm looking at my portfolio as the same thing is a farm is producing an income for me every single month and like this is like my farm this is my my version of what Warren Buffett did like when he was younger right he buys different companies that pays dividend that pays that pays him an income residual income from their profit right they go out they make money and they pay him from their profit right and as we can see here on a monthly basis the portfolio is paying me passively I, all I just have to do is put money in consistently no matter what the market does the market goes up it goes down it goes sideways it goes side anywhere the market goes I'm just I just keep on putting putting money in now if you had to have a situation whereby the market falls strongly again on my portfolio I will be buying buying stock quite aggressively but so far um, my portfolio has pretty much recovered pretty pretty nicely in total I'm up 21% but I really don't really bother myself with these two numbers like I said I bother myself with what I'm earning and what I'm able to put in so I really hope you've enjoyed this video next week I'll be I'll be bringing a more in-depth video video on the movement of the stock and why I moved it you know well I already touched on why I moved it I'm just gonna be uh, content like this every single week so you can see how my portfolio portfolio uh, is doing and how my portfolio has been progressing with the market and all that stuff so please subscribe stick around I would love to have you around support my channel share this video with other people if you think they can learn something from this and have a good day I'll see you next week bye